if you're climbing up a mountain and you're already two-thirds of the way, and you can actually see the top, but the only way you reach it is to go back down to the bottom and find another path, which is something very painful to do. But would you do it? So it's been a long time. I hope you're all well. After publishing my 69 video, I took some time off YouTube to focus on the Discord mentorship. Running the Discord was taking me much more time than I thought, but at least it was worth it. Many were able to pass challenges and even get funded in there, so I'm really happy and it's been really great to see. But I also wanted to help people in here on YouTube as well, especially today because I wanted to expose myself a little bit and we'll be looking at my old trading journal, when I used to trade the classic little way. I did hesitate before showing this trading journal in here on YouTube, but I thought there's nothing to be ashamed of. It actually shows me that I've been able to adapt and grow. And it's not part of my past and I think a lot of people can relate to that, especially ICT and SMC students. So it's okay, like I, I don't really mind. I think it's actually funny, to be honest. So if you want me to continue to post here, you can leave a like and I'll do my best to be more active. So here's my old trading journal. So you can see here that it used to be a swing trading account so I could take a trade and then hold it for multiple days. And um, this was my way of trading. So I would take a trade, it could be any time. I would set an alert and if the price would come to an area I was looking at, I would just take the trade. So no consideration for the time. So that was the first red flag. Another thing that you can see here is I used to trade everything. I would go in GPPCHEF, AUD, NZD, random instruments like CATCHEF, I used to treat silver because I didn't like gold too much. So that's another issue right there. You should focus on one single instrument, preferably in one single trading session like the New York kill zone or the London kill zone and get a professional at it. So that's another problem I had in the past. And you can see here that I logged in 102 trades. So that's the main subject for today's video is even though I spent hundreds of hours, first of all, preparing my journal, so you can see here I have a custom statistic that was specific to this trading strategy. So look at here. I spent countless hours setting up my trading journal. I had different custom statistics. I had what was the currency so I could understand which pair I was best at. I used to look at the daily. Is it ranging? Is it an uptrend, a downtrend, an EMA? I used to use the 50 EMA. I used to look at the 4 hour, 1 hour and then even 15 minutes. So that's also something I'm trying to implement a little bit more, especially since I updated my strategy in the Discord. I talked about that with the other members. I'm trying to add a bias to my trading. This is something I'm not using a lot, but I've been working on that lately. But to continue here, you can see that I used to look at some conference like different FIBS level. Is it a third touch on the trend line? Is it a fourth touch on the trend line? So you can see very little way in here. Double tap. What was counter to my trade? Did we have a potential counter, high or low or lower high? Did we have a news? Did we get a close above the 78? So that was for me in the past something to invalidate a trend. Uh, I had a different take profit level, so the minus 27, maybe some people knew about that. And uh, look at all the time I used to, to spend on my journal. But then it came a time where I saw that clearly what I was doing was not working. So you can see here, some good trades, some bad trades, you know, I was profitable, but overall, I knew something wasn't right at that point. A lot of break even. If I went to do that the rest of my life, I couldn't just keep up on that. There were too many break even. This wasn't normal. I had a lot of stop losses. I had some good trades, but this was around the time where I started looking into ICT because another uh, YouTuber, I don't know if you know, Johnny Godfrey, I saw that he was also switching to a different strategy. So I also started looking into ICT and then um, I never looked back from there. But uh, just for fun, let's just look at some trades. I'll show you uh, my analysis. So you can see here a lot of trend lines. I had here a resistance level. So what I loved to do in the past at least was to wait for a third touch on the trend line with it, not the counter trend line. So I think this is a wedge. So I used to wait for the break retest coming into this trend line right there preferably with a touch of the EMA so that was my golden setup <laughs> and uh, yeah eventually this one was a was a, um, a win but look at how many days I held onto the trade from the 14 to the 21st so just to get like a 
1 to 2.5, I had to hold on the trade for multiple days. So I really didn't like this way of trading. And uh, there's a lot of things that I could do better. I remember uh, I saw a story about that. Someone said, if you're climbing up a mountain and you're already two thirds of the way and you can actually see the top, but the only way you reach it is to go back down to the bottom and find another path, which is something very painful to do. But would you do it? That's one of the reasons why I most failed. But that was, a, to be honest, a very difficult decision for me because I spent all of this time working on a single strategy, putting all of my effort into my journal. As I told you, I, I journaled 102 trades, but then I had to decide, okay, this is not working. Let's take a step back and then start from zero. Yeah, to be honest, that was one of the hardest decisions I made, but it was worth it, 100%. Let's look at this shit right there. So I had all the confluences. I had my wedge, I had my third touch on the trend line. I had my 50 fib and look here. I saw this clear trend line right there. I had a first touch. So what I was waiting for is a touch to the trend line plus a rejection with an engulfing candle. I used to love those engulfing candles. I would always wait for this confirmation be before entering a trade. I had this double top for me. I had this third touch right there and look what happened. And this is what we're trading actually today is we had this level that I used as my um, stop loss. We went, took out all of the liquidity right there. I was part of this liquidity at the time. And then we had the breakdown. Rejection, this is on the 15 minutes, I think. So came back to order block and then went back down. So you can see how funny this is because when I'm looking back at those trades, I can see now what the smart money is doing. I had the overall direction, but I knew that there was something going on. There will be always something like that, like a small stop loss, and then it continued right to my tick profit. Let's look at another example right there. Here's another perfect example. So I had the overall direction right. I had my different moving averages. I saw this trend line right there. I went to buy on the third touch of this trend line. And what happened, we eventually went lower, took out all of the liquidity, and then went back up. So if you're seeing this, if you're a retail trader and you're seeing this, I used to be at the exact same place. So I know it was a different video than usual, but I thought it was a pretty fun video to do. But if you like this video, you can leave a like. Uh, I'll try to post also more technicals, things I learned lately in my journal and uh, that could help your trading. And if you want to see more of that, you can just subscribe. All right, see you. Thank you.